basically. One, one put in a stopper. Per, put in a stopper. Excuse me, I'm going to grab my note because I want to make notes. And then just separate it to start it. Okay. 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 I forgot that. You showed us that. So, and here's, uh, we've already got your vertical separation. It's right here. So I'm going to use my left index finger to hold on to that. <laughs> and then we're going to um, reach under the first yarn and take its neighbor through. Reach under the second one and take its neighbor. Reach under the third one and take its neighbor. And I've made my cross. And by putting a little tension and stretching, it's up there, and then I can just slide my hand up to get hold of it. There's my cross, and I'm going to slip it over the pegs. And then I'm going to go around the first peg. And once I'm there, and everything is secure, by pulling on this, this isn't going anywhere. I'm going to take my little finger and go straight down that vertical separation, and then with my ring finger, I'm going to scoop up one side, and down the other, and it just makes a little X on my fingers. That is usually the thing that people find the hardest. And I don't know if it's how I explain it. And then I mostly use my left hand, although my right hand helps, to lay the yarn over the pegs, because I don't want to move very far from the spool. So this is my tension box, basically, my right hand. And I'm going to make my little cross here, come around, and on the way back, I'm going to do the opposite thing. I mean, that's not going to work. All right, maybe we'll put the little cross down here. on the horizontal part. So we'll go this way, because we can go two different ways. So there's the cross, and we'll fidget it over okay. to get to the canyon chain. Now you came straight back up that side instead of going around the right. peg. Right, so the little cross is going to be okay. at the very end there. Yeah, it's like this. And then I'm just going to work my way back up again. And that's the bout cross or half the Right, that's the um, bout cross. Is what I sometimes call it. I think it's B-O-U-T. Yes, that is. Why do you start at the top? Why do you not start at the bottom? I don't know. I always have. I was, I was taught that I start there. Um, because it's easier to pick out my cross up here than halfway up my knees down there, too. I mean, that would be one reason. Okay, as soon as you get around this peg, stop and pick out your cross. Because what you want is this absolutely lovely, tidy arrangement of threads rather than droopy, which is which. So, and, and you're going to spend a lot of time when you first start this um, tightening up your, your spools to help you pick out your cross. Is, so, it, is it better for your yarn to come over the spool than under? Or I don't think it matters, but I try and have them all the same. Because then it's easier to tell which is which. If this were under and this went over, they'd be a lot closer. Because I put all my under. Yeah, I, I think consistency is good. All as long as it's yeah. Okay, so I've already made my vertical separation. It's on my left index finger. Under one, take its neighbor. Under one, take its neighbor. Under one, take its neighbor. Here's my cross, but in this case, I need to turn it upside down. Can you see the twist up here? Over at that far peg? There's a twist there. Mm -hmm. I want to undo that twist, so I'm going to slip the cross up this way, and there's no twist there. I can and see that I did that. you do that. Yep. To get that twist. I used to do that in a different way, but it hurts. So I don't do it that way anymore. And this may be simpler. I don't know. I mean, it may be easier for people to well, see. Just saying why you do this it makes a huge okay. difference for so me. As soon as you get around this peg, stop and pick out your cross while you have your threads arranged. So don't be in a hurry because you don't want to pull hard on that and pull it away. Now these are a little droopy. I'm going to go under one. Under the next one, under the next one. There's my cross right there, and I'm just going to slip it right on the pegs. So I'm going to go around this corner, this is, yeah. put in my tension, is, and then I'm just going to wind. Wind. No, go through putting the tension. Well, while we the okay. next pass. I'll, I'll probably have to do it again at the bottom. I'll have to stop. One of these distances is. Back. Don't worry about it.
out on the way down and tidy it up. You never want to wrap over your previous thread. So you want to wrap in front of them and slide them on. It just gives you a little more precision in the length. As soon as I come around, I stop. I change hands. Sorry, my nose itches. So I move this into my left hand. Oh, I didn't tell you that little thing. Um, when I learned to spin, Norman talked about these are your workers and these are your graspers. And the same thing is true when I'm warping. I'm holding the warp with my these fingers and these are ready to do whatever I need them to. Here's my vertical separation. My worker B gets to go in there. And then I'm going to pick out the cross. Pick, pick, pick. And I'm holding the arms with these back fingers. And I'm going to slide over here, and I'm going to eyeball that twist and take it out. I'm just going to flip it up a little bit. OK, one more time, and then I'm going to let you do it. So vertical, pick it out. a lot slower. So here's my right hand. Hindi goes in, and my ring finger scoops up and then down. So I've got 612, 612. I'm going to slide those over as a group, and I think the counting chain will be fine. And my next group is only half an inch, so I'm not ready to do the next. 